This is Mr. Beck Does Your Homework. This is AP Physics Homework 2.4 about free fall. This is question number 8 and 9, a two-part question. It says, a ball thrown vertically upward is caught by the thrower after 2.38 seconds. So I know that my time here is going to be 2.38 seconds. Find the initial velocity of the ball. So I'm looking for v0. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So my g equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now it doesn't seem I have enough information here. I've got a time and gravity and I'm looking for my initial velocity. But I'm missing something here. But what I know is that when I throw a ball up and it comes back down to its initial position, I know that my vertical displacement is zero. So I know that my displacement equals zero because it's gone up and come back down to where it started. So displacement is zero when you wind up where you started. So now, if I don't care about my final velocity, but I've got time, initial velocity, gravity, and displacement, and I don't care about my final velocity, what I know is that my displacement is my initial velocity times time plus one half my acceleration times time squared. So I can solve for v0 here. So my displacement is going to be 0 is my initial velocity, which I'm looking for, times time, which is 2.38 seconds, plus 1 half of my acceleration of negative 9.8 times time squared. Um, oh, 2.38 squared. There it is. So I've got 0 equals v0 times 2.38 plus 1 half of negative 9.8 times 2.38 squared. Now it's simple enough to take this, move it over here. When you see that negative, it's going to become positive over here. Divide by 2.38, that'll give me my v0. So now it's just math. The other thing to notice is if you look at this equation, y is v0 t plus 1 half gt squared, I've got a t and a t squared. So when this is 0, what I know is that um, I could divide both sides by t. So I divide by 2.38, that'll leave me v0 all by itself, and I'd have 1 half times negative 9.8 times t. So that's a neat little um, trick you can do when you've got a 0 displacement. But this will work out just fine. Number two says, sorry, question number nine, part two says, find the maximum height it reaches. So now I need a displacement at the maximum height. Well, wait a second, that's not at this time. That's the time it takes to go up and back down. I want to know the maximum height. I want to know what it's doing up here. So that happens if I remember my tricks. If I go up and back down, that's going to happen at half the time. So now I've got a second part of this equation, sorry, second part of this question, but I want to do it at half the time. So if I take my time over 2, that's going to be the maximum height. So 2.38 divided by 2 gives me 1.15 plus another 4, 1.19, 1.19 seconds is going to be my time. That's, that's the time I'm interested in, okay? So where is it at 1.19 seconds? So now again I can do y equals v0t because now I have my initial velocity um, plus one half of uh, g times uh, t squared. So when I plug in t squared I plug in v0 so my displacement is going to be my v0 from over here times my time of 1.19 seconds plus one half of negative 9.8 times my t squared 1.19 squared and that will give me my maximum height. It's where my uh, it's at half the time. Another way to have tackled this problem is to know that up at the top my final velocity is zero. So I could have said that since um, I'm, at half the, I'm at half the time, but I don't care about the time, let me do it so that my final velocity is zero. Um, and I could use my initial velocity that I got from over here, and I could use my acceleration of negative 9.8, and I'm looking for my displacement. So I could say v squared equals v0 squared plus... Um, yeah, this one comes from here. So I can use v squared equals v0 squared plus 2gy and solve it this way. And it's going to be an equivalent answer, so you can solve it that way as well.